I'm just gonna have to get through this. Oh dear, that's gonna blow. There we go. Well, this is definitely gonna make it interesting. Hello and welcome to episode 27 of the Late Night Gaming Show. I am joined with the mighty Mike. Hello! Hi guys! He's finally back and he's going to be joining me for the next few weeks uh, as Jody is jet-setting off in Chicago and even Canada as well. Would you believe? Uh, you might have noticed as well that you can't see our faces and there's just something random going on in the background. Uh, <laughs> that is because we literally hit record and our light exploded. <laughs> um, and as this is the late night gaming show, um, it is night time, it's dark, and you can't see us. So we just had to make an executive decision to just cut it and uh, just do a voiceover. So we apologize for that, but you'll be seeing some beautiful gameplay clips and all sorts uh, going on in the background here. So enjoy the show, and we're just going to get cracking on. So we're going to go into our first section, which this week is What Have We Been Playing This Week? Uh... Huh. What you, what you been playing this week? <laughs> okay, welcome back. It's time for what we've been playing this week. So you will have actually noticed um, that we didn't have, we haven't had an episode up for a week now, and that is because I went and smashed my ankle up. Mm -hmm. uh, I've torn all my ligaments up in my ankle. I've barely been able to walk, so I've had to, had to have a week off. But Mike, that has resulted in me having a lot of time for game, game time. As you'd expect. As you would expect. Yeah. Um, but before we get into that, we've not heard from you in such a long time. What have you been up to, Mike? And it, it, before we even get into that, we did announce on the last episode that you would have some amazing news. I did big it up. I said it was more important than a pregnancy announcement. <laughs> I said if I told my parents that my wife was pregnant, that wouldn't get the reaction that we would get from this news. So <laughs> this is a big moment. Mike, do you want to let us know yeah, what, what, well, what's happened? No one gave birth, but... <laughs> You did, though. You have given birth. There, there, there has been a slight birth in, in Mike's life. <laughs> so it was my, my, my birthday this, well, last month, guys. And my my uh, generous brother happened to purchase me a uh, Nintendo Switch. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Oh, it's about time. Everyone's been nagging me to get one. <laughs> um, and to be honest with you, I was just waiting for people to, to get me one. <laughs> so... Andy got me one, and I'm I am so happy with it. I've been playing it quite a bit. Um, <laughs> not as much as I'd like to, to be honest with you. Why is that? Because unfortunately, Tim, I have, to, I have not bust my ankle. <laughs> Maybe I should I should take Axie and bust my yeah, ankle because I get sixteen weeks of paid leave. Do you? Yeah. yeah. Start so start using it, mate. I will bust my ankle <laughs> and play loads of Nintendo Switch. But no, I've been playing uh, Super Mario Odyssey. Nice. Yeah, I I finished that. But well. I say I finished you finished it. You finished the main story. I finished the main story. I've still got a lot of stars to get. Well, not stars, moons. moons. It says it's, it still kind of freaks me out a bit that it's moons, not stars. I yeah. don't know. They I have mean, to change it up somehow. Yeah. Are you, there is stars in it, though. Oh, do we, do we... I tell you what, this is a spoiler. I, yeah. Well, I, I think it's been out for long enough. Ignore what I just said. There's no stars <laughs> in it. It's been out for long enough. <laughs> so I'm going to just say now. This is a end game Mario spoiler. So if you've not played Mario Odyssey or you've not watched it all over <laughs> YouTube, then it's skip ahead about 30 seconds. Mike, what are we talking about? We're talking about you unlock Mushroom Kingdom at the end. I did. And it is yes. just the best thing ever, isn't yeah. it? And on the scooter. Oh, yes. Just going around on that scooter. It's sick. <laughs> I love that scooter. So much fun. I mean, I could just drive around on that and have fun with that. That's yeah. Nice with you. So I'm interested to know. And um, this is it. Uh, is this spoil? This, is, this, this may still be spoiler territory. But what was your favorite world or land? That's really hard. Or kingdom, should I say? Um, well, that is a hard one, actually. I, I feel really like it was the ice world, but I can't the remember. Ice what, one. Yeah, I can't remember what it's called. The the one with the, the lake. Oh, the one with the. Oh, okay, oh, the one with to, you get to roll with, oh, sorry, with the big something. Eskimo. Yeah, the, the, things. yeah, the big walrus white yeah. things that you can roll around as a ball. Yeah, it's cool. That's so much fun. I like the, um, I was a fan of the beach one. Yeah. I thought you would have loved the beach, you're oh, obsessed it, with the beach. The beach <laughs> one was pretty good. I love snow more, don't I? So yeah, I, I guess mean, like, so. But the, I, I love taking control of those weird squid things that you could shoot across the lake with. Yeah, oh, yeah. Anything you can move with, there's so many different ways to move yeah. in that game, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, I've got to say, one of the things, not not many things annoy me a lot 
got Tim Gettys from uh, Kind of Funny. When this was when this first came out, he made a statement that I I wanted a rage quit a rage quit the video because he said he said that the the capture mechanic of with the hat is yeah. like it's literally one of the worst things they put in Mario. Like they were like it's just that um what's the word um gimmicky, and I was like gimmicky. No. It's like one of the best things Mario's ever right. done. It changes the entire game. It's so much fun. So there you go. There's my like moment of rage. <laughs> Like, yeah, it kind of turns Mario into a bit of a psychopath, really, when you think about it. Yeah, it does. He can control things. <laughs> like, it's a bit weird. But it is cool. It's so cool. Yeah. And I've been playing some uh, Breath of the Wild as well. Mm -hmm. um, I just I just acquired a costume, which I'm not going to say anything about <laughs> if you've not played it. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's, really, it's, it's good fun. It's good fun. <laughs> I have to admit, I'm not very far because I keep dying. Okay. Well, I'll have to help you with that. Constantly the dying. Get out. It's so annoying. I don't know why I keep dying. We'll figure it out. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. So yeah, And to monsters as well, to, to NPCs. I keep dying to the NPCs. I just can't kill them. <laughs> it's really annoying. I'll teach you, mate. It's okay. <laughs> because for me, I, this time I've been, I've been spending it finishing off games. Okay. Uh, so I finally got around to doing the Breath of the Wild um, second DLC. So I've just finished that off. Yeah. And oh, you just... You come away and you just forget how much you love that game. And then I come back and I'm just like, I couldn't stop. It's just so good. <laughs> so I, I get it. But I just want to say, guys, you know, all you guys in the community, we made it happen. We Since E3, <laughs> we just kept saying, might get a Switch, might get a Switch. And it's happened. It didn't happen the way we thought, but it doesn't matter because he's got a Switch. But, but you knew. That Tim said this to me after I got it, actually. That he realised that he was asking the wrong person to get Mike yeah. a Switch. Because Mike was not the one to buy one. It was my brother. And, and Tim, knows my brother likes to spend money sometimes. So, so yeah, it made, me, it made me the happiest man in the world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the build-up was worth it. I've still got to add Tim, though. you still got what? I've still got to add you as a friend. Oh, yeah, no, I can't believe you have I know, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Yeah, so for me, like I said, I, I've been off, off my feet most of, the, like, all last week I had to stay off it completely, so I've just been lying down. I actually got a bit bored towards the end. But um, I used it as time to finish off games that I I hadn't, you know, it's like you've played a lot of it and you just stop for some reason. So I finished Breath of the Wild. Um, I already finished the main story, which is the DLC. I finished the Splatoon 2 DLC, which was so good, the Octo expansion. <laughs> Incredible game. Um, and then I just started playing Wolfenstein 2 yesterday. I played it a bit already, but this mm. is on the Switch, and I've just got so into it now, and I'm, like, determined to finish that one off, too. <laughs> um, I think it was because the new uh, Doom got, got some gameplay, uh, Doom Eternal, it's called. Oh, right, okay. Uh, that got some new gameplay, and because it's Bethesda, it just inspired me to play every Bethesda game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so I was excited about that. But uh, there's another game called Old Man's Journey. So the, the summer sale has been on. You picked up... A game of the summer sale. I did, yeah. The Switch summer sale. Uh, Lego City Undercover. And what? That's a perfect that's, game. That's that, good fun. That was my recommendation from last week as well. So <laughs> there you go. Um, in the show, I recommended it. It's twenty five pounds at the moment. I yeah, twenty five pounds. Yeah, definitely worth it. Um, so I, I, I picked up uh, like five indie games that I was really, really wanted to get, but I didn't want to pay full price for them. Yeah. Um, so I picked up a game called Old Man, Old Man's Journey, and that's going to be our review of the week. So stay tuned to the end of the episode mm -hmm. for that. Um, it was it was a really interesting game. Um, also, the unthinkable happened. So, you if you've been watching this show since day one, you might have followed my hatred for Fortnite since day one, right? So day one, I'm one of these people where if something's just like mega popular, like over the top popular for no reason, I kind of want to stay away from it. It's the same with PewDiePie. PewDiePie is like, <laughs> what is it, 56 million subscribers or something? So I refuse to watch anything. I've been watching some of his stuff now because I thought it's funny. And I hate myself for it, Mike. I hate myself for it. <laughs> it's boredom taking over. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah. So um, I've been playing, I mean, for the last month or so. So since the new season of Fortnite, I just non-stop. It just got me. The last season, I played it a little bit more. But now I'm just on it all the time. And I'm like, every day I'm doing the new challenge. And I'm, I'm on tier something like 87 now, which yeah. is just, for me... You know, you know, guys, you know, for me, that's just stupid. Um, and I'm just proper into it. But the unthinkable happened and I finally won my first solo game. Hey. I don't I don't say that I'm a great Fortnite player. I'm not. But I got my first win and I was so happy. I got the footage saved on my Switch as well. So maybe I'll put it up to prove it. I don't know. But then straight after that match, I went on again 
And I won a second game. Yay. Oh, I was so happy. I'm one of the, uh, for some reason, when it got to me, it just got to 1v1. I start shaking so much. And I'm like, <laughs> and on the Switch, when it's like in handheld mode and it's little tiny controls, you start sweating and just sliding off. Like, ah! <laughs> uh, but yeah, I was so happy. Even my wife was like, why is the whole sofa shaking? And I was like, it's me and one other person. Uh, so yeah, it was funny. So, but yeah, lots, lots of playtime. So uh, we've had a lot of playtime. So yeah. we'll see. Uh, I'm, I've actually come into, well, I've got to go back to the doctors um, probably tomorrow to get it checked. So we'll see how much more time I've got to take off. But I'm hoping it's actually not too much more time because I there's only so much you can just sit there. <laughs> And do almost nothing. I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. I don't know about that one. <laughs> I think I could spend a good year doing nothing right now. Oh wow. Oh yeah. I I just can't do that. I'm like I just <laughs> I'm just I very much I'm just up and about all the time. I just can't I can't stop. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, so that's what we've been playing this week. Uh, we're going to move on to section three, which is now the news. It's time for some news, yeah. It's time for some news. Welcome back. It's time for section two slash three because we've missed off a th- we missed off joke of the week this week. There's no jokes to be shared. So uh, uh, welcome back. It's time for the news. So number one is um, PlayStation um, has been celebrating. Uh, it's selling 500 million uh, PlayStation consoles. So that's across every um, PlayStation console. They sold 500 million, which is kind of insane. Um, but to celebrate, they have took it off no i wanted to get it up um they they have actually i'm just getting this up so mike can actually see it um they actually unveiled a ps4 pro limited edition uh 500 million console um but here we go so that here it is for you mike i'll put it up on the screen so you guys can see it too um Mm. so it's like a translucent blue um on on the controller the console and on the camera um so it's all matching. Obviously, there's no way you could get the color of the camera, especially. You couldn't get that any other way. It's all right. um, uh, so it's kind of got this, like the logos and stuff are in gold. And it's also got a um, a little sort of gold plate going down the front of it as well that has the uh, your, your edition number, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so whatever number out of 50,000. So I was I looked at it and I was kind of like, mm, yeah, I could go for that. And you know what I'm like with my yeah. <laughs> edition console. Edition console. And I was thinking, yeah, that'd be a nice one to finish off the generation on. <laughs> I could deal with that. Um, so Game Art, the website in UK, uh, put out an email about it and they were like, check out check out this, it sent you to a YouTube video and it just said stop coming in on the 24th of April. I mean, of April, 24th of August. So I was excited. I went on the website just to check that it wasn't up and it wasn't. And then like I checked yesterday, uh, as in this will have been this Tuesday for us. Check, check the, the, the on Tuesday and it's and it says sold out. And I'm like, uh. it never went <laughs> up. How, how? And you've not even told, you said the stock was coming in the 24th. Oh, I was so annoyed. But then apparently some people have got down to the, the game retail stores, which I couldn't do because I can't walk, uh, <laughs> and they managed to pre-order it as well. And obviously, it's gone straight up on eBay, and it's going for ridiculous amounts of money. But what did you think of this, Mike? Do you do you like it? it even comes with a matching uh, translucent blue stand. I like the gold. You like the gold on I it. I can't see so much blue though. Like you can't see blue. The whole thing's. I blue. can see it blue. I mean, it looks kind of black. Oh, that's because um, because it's translucent. That'll just be the inside of the PlayStation 4. Oh, okay. Yeah, so the shell will be just pure translucent blue. Yeah. You can kind of see it on the controller as well. You can yeah, see the I, can see, and I stuff. can see it in parts. It's weird that they've not made the camera translucent, though. Yeah. Why have they made the whole thing translucent but that? I don't know. So I'm kind of anno- I'm kind of annoyed, but at the same time, I'm like, everything's black in my room anyway, so it wouldn't mm. fit. But it's, it's a nice little thing, but... I wouldn't buy it. No. 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 Buy it to sell, maybe. Yeah, buy it to sell, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you've got the money in the round, guys, buy one and sell it. <laughs> yeah. Although, I don't think you're going to be getting your hands on this now. Um, so, I mean, I, I don't know if this is as bad as when they did a, um, I think it was a 20-year celebration PS4 console. They made it the PlayStation 1 Grey, and it had a bunch of stuff mm-hmm. on it. And, like, they actually told people when the pre-orders were going to go up, and it, like, crashed the website and everything. It annoyed tons of people. <laughs> And they go for like over a thousand pounds now. Oh my god! Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know how I feel about it. Um, Four hundred and fifty it is, so it's a hundred more than a normal PS4 Pro. Um, it's just one of them. I think if you don't have a PS4 Pro, 
Sure. Yeah, why and not? it's two terabytes as well, which isn't in any of the PS4 Pro console, although I just put a two terabyte hard drive in mine anyway. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's kind of cool. I don't really care that much, so I'm not too upset. I'm just more annoyed of how it happened. Yeah. I hate it when it's like, you know, something that you feel like you should be able to get, and it's like you get screwed over because of just a website being stupid. But like there KFC you go. KFC and Runcorn. Like KFC and Runcorn, what do you mean? You should be able to get chicken from KFC, <laughs> oh, but they never have it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's crazy. You literally go to KFC and they go, sorry, we're out of chicken. And you're like, so what exactly do you have in? We have fries. <laughs> Nobody wants KFC fries. <laughs> Although the new, some new ones, they have nice, nice ones. I went to Burger King for breakfast the other day. Oh, Burger right. King fries. <laughs> I went for breakfast and I ordered it. And then he came out to the car and was like, I'm really sorry. We've got no hash browns left. I didn't and even I know they just, did breakfast. Yeah, they did breakfast, but it's, it's rubbish. Don't buy it. Oh, it was like gray, gray cold bacon. It oh, was nice. No. Um, Is it worse than Subway? Yes, it's worse than Subway. Oh my. And that's saying something. That is Coming from Mike, that's saying something. <laughs> They've got no hash browns. Um, I'll put some fries in your bag. I was, just, I was like, do I really want fries at... In the morning. At mm. five past eight in the morning? Who wants fries then? That's weird. Yeah. I, d- d- don't, don't go there. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> There's our uh, advice to you this week. Uh, number two. Um, so uh, reportedly, so this isn't official, officially confirmed, but there's a new Xbox uh, Elite Wireless Elite controller reportedly coming in October, and the code name is Washburn, which I thought was <laughs> hilarious because I'm like, it's basically all you people who bought your the uh, Elite controller first. You've been you've been burned. Yeah. You can wash it, wash out that burn yeah. with this controller. Yeah. Uh, so the reason I say that is because the new features, and I say that with quotation marks, uh, because it says uh, they'll have a built-in battery, a, a USB C, um, I'm, I guess an USB C port, uh, Bluetooth. Uh, three locking positions for triggers, um, and a longer travel for the paddles. So essentially, everything that should have been in the original one <laughs> is Which now. They didn't put in because they wanted you to buy another one. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so all of the all of these features uh, have been put in for this next one. The thing that's baffled me the most with these controllers is you're paying like in the UK it'll be 130 quid, they, and it doesn't come with a battery. <laughs> how how is that possible? I remember getting it when I got mine because I got it with the console. I just come. I took it. I was like, "Where's the battery?" I was like, "Are you serious? You want me to put double A batteries in this?" I, I might have felt like I was five again. <laughs> Interested in buying one, Mike? No, I don't. Have Xbox. It's all good. Yeah, but you got a PC. That's why the Bluetooth is good because it'll finally just work wirelessly with you. No, your I'm not. I just, I just don't. It's keyboard and mouse. I'm sorry. It upsets me deeply, but no. there's nothing we can do about keyboard it. Keyboard and mouse and Joy Cons. <laughs> Yes, I accept that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll accept that. But yeah, I, do, I mean, when I'm playing on my PC, I generally use a, an Xbox One controller. Um, oh, no. I've got the beautiful Sea of Thieves one. The game sucks, but the controller's nice. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that was annoying because I, 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 with my Elite controller, you, you had to use a wire to plug it in because it didn't have Bluetooth in it. But the normal controllers do have Bluetooth, which is really annoying me. So at least it's got that point in it, but I still think it's a ripoff. But there you go. Uh, next. Gone Home has been announced for the Switch, and it's coming very, very soon. It's coming on the 23rd of August. Have you ever played Gone Home? No. Interested in it? It's kind of like a walking simulator. Uh, You kind of come into this house. um, I don't even think you really know who you are until a bit, but I think you're one of the family members. But you're basically coming in, and you're trying to work out why, where everyone's gone. Oh, right, okay. Um, And it's just like, I think it's literally your home, really, but it's like you're trying to work out what's going on, and you kind of follow the stories of each family members as you go around. It's yeah. really good. And then I thought the ending was just like... Nah. It's only got one ending? Yeah. Mm. You can actually finish the game in something like 10 minutes if you want oh, to. Because okay. I think you, it, you can just run straight to the end. I think when I played it, it took me about an hour to two hours. It's not... It's, it's like a cheap game. Yeah. But it is, it's the sort of... It's the game that really pushed that genre into a thing so you know like games like firewatch and those are the games that are like walking around yeah just storytelling kind of kick-started that so it's a really good game until i thought that when you get to the end and you find the reason why it kind of everything's happened it's kind of like uh i found i found the other family members stories more engaging than what was supposed to be the finale but ah. but it's, it's still i think it's worth a play and it'll be an interesting um interesting play for you okay i think Good i have i think i've got a drm free PC copy of it, so you might be able to play on PC for free nice. if I can find it. But there you go. 
nice little one sitting game. Yeah. But I, uh, but yeah, but not much notice. That's literally coming out next week. So if you want that on Switch, I don't know why you'd want it on Switch. It's one of those games where I'm like, if you haven't played it, you can get it cheaper. So you can get it for pennies in other places. But mm. like, it's not really a game that I'm like, oh, please let me play that on the go. <laughs> but there you go. Uh, number four, Fortnite is forever in the news to my, I feel <laughs> my curse. Um, so apparently there's a new, though they're not apparently, I have played it. There's a new 50 versus 50 mode, which is 50 versus 50 is just the best mode. Yeah, it's just it the most fun. Um, but they've took off the normal 50 versus 50 and replaced it with 50 versus 50 soaring mode. And it's kind of like, in Breath of the Wild, you jump off a cliff and you pull out you pull out your glider. That's yeah. just what you do. And it's so satisfying. I have died a few times since I've been playing Zelda again because I've just jumped off a cliff, gone to part of the glider <laughs> and gone, why is it not deploying? <laughs> just dropped to my death. Well, this mode basically does that. So you can jump off high, like high areas and you can pull out your glider which is kind of cool and then there's loads more jump pads that have been put in this it's kind of just like encouraging movement around but yeah interested by it's easier to get away from the storm yes yeah. definitely yeah. definitely does it's good because that's the one of the things isn't it it's just like when you know you've got to run like half of the map yeah. it's just boring in it yeah but uh but yeah you interested you're going to be playing it mike i am well they, they removed the normal 50 for you yes you, but... oh as they make, they Why? have because fifty versus fifty is a limited time event. Everybody just wants them to make it a permanent yeah. event, but they just won't do it, and it's dead annoying. At least they, at least when they took it off, they put up just a, did they just put up another fifty versus fifty mode? Yeah. At least, you know what I mean. This is what Mag should have been. Oh, Mag! Mag was sick. that was so good. Was it like a hundred players, if I remember. Yeah, I think it, it was. was. Wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. that was per team. Was it? So the you ran up against another team, and it was like I think it was a hundred. 100 in each team, wasn't it? It might have been. I, I think it was remember. 100 in each team, but that was madness. Just we had so it, much. Bro. We had so much fun. Yeah, on we that. did. I, I, do you reckon that? <laughs> I, do you reckon the servers are still up for that? I don't know. I think it's up and down. Oh, we need to find out. Because I've got, I do, I've seen the copy of it on my PS3 a few times, and I thought, oh, I should try that again. I love it so <laughs> much, but it's just so good, wasn't it? Oh, yes. And that will never come back ever again. No. This is Damn just it! Insane. Damn you, Sony, for for. Uh, for destroying Zipper, who made the game. <laughs> so there you go. Oh, I want to play that so bad now. Even just like reviving people was satisfying. Because <laughs> you had that little reviving gun, yeah. didn't you? Oh my gosh. We like knew those maps inside out, didn't we? <laughs> uh, okay, so moving on. Uh, there was a Smash Brothers Direct that came out of literally nowhere. They sent out an email and it literally was like, I think I got the email at half 11 and it was like, join us for a Direct at three o'clock. It was like, what? Um, <laughs> so... They straight away they announced two new characters from the Castlevania series. They showed off a new stage, and um, it's kind of cool as well because there's like bosses come out, and you can actually fight the bosses. All oh, right, so. um, which is kind of cool. Um, and apparently attached to that level, there's something like seventy tracks of music because they were like he's, the guy was well, Sakurai was basically like our team just loves the music out of Castlevania, so we basically just put it all in. It's like, okay. Uh, so some other crazy things that came out of it, they said, I think there was around 70 characters or something in that game. Um, and I think they're all unlocked from the start, I think. Oh my gosh. Um, oh, there's also 70 stage. Oh, I think I think there's 100. I think so, yeah. Oh, that's boring. I, so. I, ho I hope that's not the case. Yeah, but I, I think I think well. I can't remember if they said that was the case or not. But um, I hope, I, I think a lot of people have just been saying, we just want to start off with like, five to ten characters and unlock the rest as you go yeah i can't imagine they would i think i might have got that wrong yeah i know i know the stages all the stages are unlocked which i don't even want all the stages to be unlocked no, from the really. start but he did say all the all the stages are unlocked and i think there's about a hundred stages something like that okay. and then it's apparently now with these stages as well you can turn them all into standard stages as well so you know like um final destination and things like that where it's just like a it's just like a straight platform yeah so you can make every level that but just with the backgrounds of the different levels. You know uh, what I mean? So for people who are like boring and like Andy, who just goes, can we play Final Destination? And we have to go, oh, fine. <laughs> um, you know, you can essentially do that because that's what the pros do, don't they? They just want mm -hmm. the normal stages. Um, so they also announced that these like, you can do morphing now. So you can have, you can choose like two stages that you really like and like partway through the stage will morph into the next stage. So I think you can have more than that, but it's kind of like, Keeping it, keeping up the craziness, you know what I mean? So yeah. you can be on, 
the Hyrule Castle. Yeah, and then it'll just morph into a Metroid level. Yeah. And it's just crazy. But it, it looked really cool. Uh, also, I think there was over 700 music tracks as well, which is just insane. And you can actually just use it as a music player as well. So you make your screen go black. And as you walk around, you can just listen to some some creepy music from uh, Earthbound <laughs> or something. I don't know. Uh, so that was kind of cool. Um, are we excited for Smash? I'm so excited that excited you can get Smash. Smash now. I am very excited for Smash. This is going to be yeah. just the most I might have to wait one. for a while before I get it. Like, Why is that? I don't know. Just wait for the price to drop. I always do. Oh, my. The price for that game ain't dropping. It, it ain't dropping. And official actual Nintendo games made by Nintendo. They do not drop in price. Even like um, Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze, which is a port of a Wii U game that came out in March, is still the same price. Oh, God. <laughs> so, Damn it. I, guess I won't the, be waiting. It's just the way, it. unfortunately, it's just the way Nintendo games uh, work. But the good thing is, if you ever want to sell stuff on, you get your money back every time. Because <laughs> <laughs> I got bored of Kirby. I thought it was like just not a great game. Um, I sold it and I actually made a little bit of money. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm excited. And you can obviously get the GameCube controllers. You can play GameCube controllers if oh, you're obsessed sick. with that. Um, and there was actually a limited edition. I was wondering if they were going to do one. I was like, it came up and I was like, I'm going to have to pre-order this now because it's going to sell out. And then it came up and it was basically, you get the game, you get a GameCube controller adapter and a GameCube controller. And I was like, I can buy them separately. What's the mm. point? But it comes in a special box, so I'll have it in a special box. <laughs> and that is sold out now, guys. So if you did want that, you can't get it anymore. <laughs> uh, number six. Uh, so Spyro, the Reignited uh, Trilogy, which we are very excited about. If you can check out our reaction video. Mike actually joined me for that. Yeah. Um, oh, my word. I can't wait for that. But there has been a bit of a controversy around this subject, and that has been that Spyro um, requires quite a major download in that the first game is on the disc, but games two and three, you have to download, and no one knows why. <laughs> Activision won't tell us why. My suspicion is that it's to stop. It's actually um, to stop people selling the game. That's what I reckon. I think it's. Uh... I think there's a good chance you'll get a code in the box, and you'll put the game in. You'll put the, and so if you sell it, essentially the person who buys off you will only get the first game. That's my assumption. I don't know that for sure. It could just be they just not finish the game. Yeah, and they want more time. Do you care? I don't know. Not, not really. Now that we've downloaded speeds like we've got nowadays. Oh, know. yes. Mm, good, good old 300 nod mag, whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So for, I mean, someone I, dial up would care. <laughs> I, I mean, it, the only thing it makes me think is that I just wonder if I'll just end up downloading the whole game, to be honest. Because it's going to be the same price. And I'm just like, if I'm downloading two of the games, can I really be bothered putting the disc in every time if I'm just going to have the same, if I have to download them anyway? Yeah. So I did that with Crash Bandicoot and actually regretted it a little bit. But now I've got it on the Switch, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then finally, we've had this whole controversy around the um, around the IGN employee called Philip. Um, we're going to talk about this in our topic of the week. So if you are here to hear what we've got to say on that matter uh wait till our very last bit which is section uh which will be section five which is our topic of the week so join us for that we're not going to go into detail now because we're going to go into detail then uh so with that said that is us done with the news and we're going to move on to section four or section three which is what is out this week can someone tell me what's out this week hey Welcome back. It's time for section three, which is what is out this week. And we have only two games that are being released this week. I even went onto my Switch. I went through on the what's coming out this week section on there. And it's just a load of rubbish. I can't even bother putting <laughs> them in. So uh, this is a bit of a slow week as it is the first proper slow week we've had in a while. But it is the middle of the summer. So it is to be expected. So as always, I'm going to tell you what noteworthy games is out this week, and then Mike will let you know what game you should buy with your hard-earned cash if you choose to do so. So our first game is World of Warcraft Battle for Azeroth comes out this week. Do you know anything about this? Because I don't know anything. I don't care about World of Warcraft at all. No, what I do know is, for anyone who watches Twitch streamers, Wreckful, who was famously banned... <laughs> by Blizzard is now one band. Oh right, and he's streaming. So he's he's he's, he's, he's is this a big exciting? He's, he's a moment? famous wild player, um, and the 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 actually right big news. <laughs> big news. <laughs> World of Warcraft finally overtook Fortnite on Twitch. No. Yes. It Are did. you serious? So is this out Seriously. now? Seriously. 
Yeah, it's out now. Oh, right, okay. I think it is. Anyway, I'm sure it's out now. It, it, pro- it might be. I think it is. Cause... I just went on... Just so you know, I, I literally got this off the What's Out This Week on the game website. Ah, oh, fair enough. So it might actually be out this yeah. week, like now. Yeah, well, I, th- I think it's out because uh, a lot of streamers were doing like 30-hour, 24-hour right. streams, that kind of thing. Um, playing the game, obviously. Um, but it's brought a lot of players back, from what you can see. I mean, mm-hmm. it always does, as it does with WoW expansions. People play it, get bored, it dies out, <laughs> yeah. and then they expand, and then everyone comes back, play it, get bored, dies, <laughs> and then it eventually expands. But you already got the you've always got the hardcore fans, yeah, the ones that love it, yeah. I mean, Andy's is talking about buying it again. All right, I'm playing it. So I mean, I might not see my brother for a few weeks. <laughs> yeah, he gets quite intense. Yeah, on the game, he right? loves that game. It's kind of like my love hate relationship with Final Fantasy Forty. I don't hate it at all, but like. The new expansion comes out, I'll get online, I'll love it, and then it just takes, there's so many missions, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> I can't get to the expansion because of how many missions there are, and then I drop off and then the next expansion comes out, I buy that, and I don't get to that expansion either, so I'm actually about three expansions behind, <laughs> but I know what you mean. No, I have to admit, I do like WoW. So well, is well, this well, actually fun. a big one? Like the title this suggests, a expansion. it kind of, the title of the expansion suggests that this is like a big end. Because it's like Battle for Azeroth, which is like the whole... Surely that's the whole thing. I doubt it'll be the end. I'm not saying it is the end, but it sounds like it's like the big major thing. Is I that think, actually I, the case? I'm, I'm fairly sure. It's going back to Horde versus Alliance now, isn't it? I'm I have no sure. idea. I'm, I'm going off I'm your I'm sure for a while it, it went like without that being that. Really? Without that being the case. I mean, it was still kind of Horde versus Alliance, but not the main thing, really. Um, But it's going back to the, the Horde versus Alliance days. Okay. Um. Where they all hate each other. Yeah. Because I would imagine, like, the title Battle for Azeroth makes it sound like it's the finale, doesn't it? Yeah. I, 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 never, I never expected that it would be because it makes too much money. But, um, oh, yeah. But I, I find that crazy. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm interested to know how big of the thing it is. Because I feel like the last expansion wasn't mass. It didn't didn't get as much. <sighs> some of them fail, <laughs> some of them don't. Yeah. Um, a lot of players like to go, they they want to go back to Vanilla WoW, which I'm I'm fairly sure Blizzard are actually releasing. Well, some there was point. somebody who actually had a server going for a while. I heard about yeah. this, and then they actually had a meeting with the heads there yeah. about it. You you can't you can't stream it on their servers. Why? Uh, so so if you stream that on Twitch, you'll get banned. Why? Basically, um, I don't know. I think it's because Blizzard don't want it up there, basically, because <sighs> it's a, a private server. It's not run by Blizzard. It's so stupid. People bought that game and they enjoyed that game like it was. Why are you bringing yeah. people back? It's like Soda Pop and Soda Pop and was told that he couldn't play that game on Twitch, and if he did, he'd get banned. So he didn't do it. Oh, but so play, much he, weird stuff. He plays it, and it, like, when he's not playing games on stream, like, he plays it for Nilla while because he loves it. Oh, but, gosh. There you go. Because the grind got so easy on it, didn't it? And I don't was, know. That was the, whole, the whole thing before <laughs> was, was, like, the grind was kind of ridiculous sometimes and like getting to like levels you actually had to do something to achieve that mm-hmm. and gearing up and stuff like that whereas now you can complete a few quests and you've, you've got thousands of gold and all the best gear yeah. and that kind of stuff so it's just yeah yeah i only played world of warcraft for a very short period of my life <laughs> i think i got to level 20 and i went uh, <laughs> um it just got repetitive bit boring to me yeah so there you go uh, and then our second game <laughs> yes we only got to we talked about that for a while but uh, our second game is dead cells and yes this game is out the whole controversy around the philip thing is about this game and um, <laughs> but this is actually the physical version of this game so this the physical version of dead cells is coming out on switch and ps4 and that's coming out on friday so if you've been holding out for a physical version like me i hate myself for this because i started off my switch life all digital and it was beautiful it was a beautiful thing my i literally could sit there i never had to change a game cartridge and then of course yeah it started getting out of hand and that collect <laughs> that collector part of me just took over and now now i've got box games of games i don't even want <laughs> you know what i mean i just i love my switch so much i think it just got to that point where i was like i actually just want to have a collection of these you know what i mean so yeah so I'll be getting Dead Cells on a f- as physical, even though it makes no sense. It's slightly more expensive, and it's inconvenient. <laughs> it's not even that big of a game. But I just think, I just like, I like having, for some reason, Nintendo stuff, I always like having physical. 
and I tried to battle it this time, it didn't happen. So there you go. Dead Cells is supposed to be, it's got like 9.5s across the board. It's supposed to be the most incredible thing ever. Whatever. And it, I think it costs, on, on the eShop, it's 22.50. And physical, it's 30. So You paid an extra eight pounds for yeah. a cartridge. Mm-hmm. Oh. I know, it's sad, isn't it? Yeah. It upsets me. On a deep <laughs> level. So Mike, out of those two, you know what? You're going to have to give us two things here. So I guess, because this is a difficult one, because one's a very hardcore PC game, but yeah. you can only play on PC. Yeah. And Mac. Can you still play it on Mac? You can still play on Mac, yeah. Uh, and then Dead Cells is, a, is across the board, but it's a, a very indie game. It's, you know. So I'm going to give you two. I'm going to give you one for hardcore players, one for just the average game. It might be the same game that you choose, but which what what do you what do you um, recommend? Or you can just straight up recommend that everyone should get into World of Warcraft and Skull from the start. I what mean, do you think, Mike? Well, I'm gonna what say wow for hardcore players. I mean, it's good for you, mm, casual players at the start. Okay. Um, but I don't know. It kind of it kind of like develops like an addictive nature. Right. So I mean. If you want to go that hardcore, <laughs> then yeah, yeah, go for WoW. Um, if you're not that bothered and, and you, you know you don't really want to spend hours grinding for gear or whatever it is, I mean you probably don't have to do that really right now. Um, but I'd say go for Dead Cells. Then. Go for Dead Cells. Go for Dead Cells. So second question. So it's so we've got go for WoW if you're hardcore. Mm-hmm. Don't if you're not. Is this a good time to jump in on World of Warcraft if you've never played it before? That's probably a good question for listeners who aren't into PC games. Yeah, I think you can jump in at any time and play that game. So is this a good time to jump in, you think? Yeah, getting on it is good. I mean, it's it's going to have a lot of the old player base back and that. So, I mean, if you want to play it, I'd say at the start of the expansion is probably the best time because you're going to have loads of people. It's going to be populated, the servers and stuff like that. So you're going to have more people to play with. It'll be easier to get into raids and quests and stuff like that, you know. So it's, I'd say play at the start rather than later, because otherwise you're going to end up waiting for like two hours to get into an arena or something stupid. There you go. There is your recommendations for today. Uh, so moving on, we're going to go into section four, which is reviews of the week. Oh, it's time to get funky. Reviews of the week. Welcome back. It's time for our reviews of the week. Uh, so I tried to pick out one of the many games to be playing this week to do uh, the review of, and one is one that I've been re- I've wanted to play this for so long since I've, I saw the trailer and I heard the the music was so good in this game, uh, and it finally went on sale and I thought this is my chance. So I picked up a game called Old Man's Journey on the Nintendo Switch. So this is actually a port of a mobile game. I didn't know that until after I purchased it and I regretted it. But then I saw the price and I thought, I'm actually all right with that. Um, So this game, it's an indie game. It only takes between two and three hours to finish. Um, I think it's about 550 on the Switch at the moment. I think it's totally worth it. But basically, it's... It's a very artistic game. I can't even... I'm going to try and explain the game mechanics to you, but it's, I can't fully explain it because it's so weird. But basically, it's all done very much like a painting. Like, the art okay. style is that. And honestly, the art style is absolutely incredible. And it's and the um, the story starts off with literally a postman coming up to this, to this old man's house. And it kind of looks like a lighthouse where the house is. Uh, and... There's no voice acting in it. It's all completely silent. There's no text or anything. So you just, you're getting the whole story of like how the characters are behaving and, and things like that. Uh, and the old man's given this letter. He sits on a bench, looks very sad. He goes into his house and then comes out and he's got all this walking gear on. And then the game just starts. Um, and from the beginning, so my wife actually sat and watched the whole thing with me. We both looked at each other and just went, this isn't going to end well. <laughs> We're like, and she just went, someone's going to come out of this very sad. And I was like, I think so too. Um, so the, the, the mechanic is kind of, you can manipulate the landscape. So it's a two, it's 2D, but it's kind of got layers to it. That's the only way I can explain it. You'll have to okay. see a picture of it to understand, but it's kind of, rip things for it. it's kind of got like, well, it, not really. What you, what you do is the whole mechanic is that you, so there'll be like different hills in different layers and you can okay. basically pull a, a, a hill up and down and if you think about because it's 2d if you pull up a hill so far 
mm. the lines will actually line up with the top of another hill. Yeah. Watch it. I'll have it. I'll have a trailer going in the background so you can understand what the heck I'm talking about. <laughs> but basically, you've got to almost like create a path for the ma- for the old man to go uh, to basically traverse through whatever landscape you're in. So yeah. sometimes it means you've got to get up. Sometimes you've got to get across. Sometimes you'll have to get to a waterfall that you'll fall down and and all sorts. Um, and that's kind of the whole game. Um, even later on, you'll get onto certain vehicles and you like, for an instance, you'll be on a train and you'll be, the, the train track will be like all over the place. You've got to try and drag it to make a complete train track. Uh, this sounds so weird. I told you it's impossible to explain, <laughs> but uh, you'll be seeing a bit of footage of it now. Um, but funnily, I think the, the game is actually just the right length so, so that that doesn't get boring because it goes on, because that is the whole game. It would if it was like a ten hour game, it'd get boring so easily. Um, and what happens is you're basically trying to get to. So it's kind of split up into a bunch of different sections, and you're trying to make it to a bench at the end of each section. So there'll be a bench at like somebody's house or another lighthouse or a boat or things like that. And the old man will sit on the sit down on the bench, and then he'll kind of reminisce, and it'll sort of unveil another part of the story. So it'll cut to like it'll be like a moving painting um, of a scene, and it'll you'll kind of work out what's going on. Yeah. Um, and that's what kept me going throughout the whole thing. I just wanted to know what was happening. <laughs> um, and I'm going to add, I'd love to do like a spoiler cast of this eventually, if enough people play it, where we can talk about how we felt about the ending and stuff. But um, I can tell you from our experience, I felt, it's, not, it's I don't think it's, it's not really to say that it's a rubbish ending. It's not, I don't think that's the right way to put it. I'd say my wife was disappointed in what happened in the outcome. I felt okay-ish about it. Yeah. I thought there was... I thought... I thought what would happen happened. <laughs> but then I think it was... What what happened, I felt like it was worse. <laughs> what happened. But what I felt... The outcome, I felt okay about. Okay. But my wife was kind of like... Righteous anger, I'll call it. <laughs> so it's, that's what I mean. I don't think anyone was like, it's. it was just a poorly written ending. It wasn't that. It's just that what you wanted it to be, it mm. wasn't. Um, so maybe even if you don't, maybe if you don't even want to buy the game, just watch a YouTube video of it. I'm sure you'll be able to watch it in two hours and get the whole thing. But it was, in terms of an artistic piece, it was amazing. And I was like, it's it's one of those games that you just pick up, you play it for the two, two or three hours, you enjoy the experience and then you just leave it. Um, and I'm so glad I played it though, because it was it was good. Um, so in terms of like a game score, it's difficult. It's really difficult because I, I actually wanted it to be slightly longer, just slightly longer. Um, and I think I don't know if they could have. It, I don't know if it fits in with it really. But I think even if they put in like a few little collectibles or hidden things that you could go back and do the level again and try and find them, that could have added a bit of replay value. Um, but in terms of just like gameplay and stuff, it's just so unique, and I've, I've never seen a game like it. So f- to me, it gets a solid eight out of ten. Okay. Um, and I, I definitely recommend it. I think even if if you've got a decent enough phone or anything like that, you can to- you don't need to buy this on the Switch. You totally don't. Um, I actually played the whole thing on the TV screen, which was still fun. But you it, you can do it all with touch controls, and I, I feel like it's ma- it is made for that. Yeah. So if you do want to give it a go, you probably pick it up on your phone or your iPad or something if you've got a tablet. Um, and play on that because it'll be a bit cheaper as well. Uh, in terms of a morality score, it's a difficult one to talk about this without spoiling the whole story. <laughs> um, but I think the stories, I think it will impact quite a few people, actually. I think some people will have been in similar situations. Um, but I think it just makes you think a lot, and I think it was... It made me... I, I, I can't talk about it without giving away the whole thing. But it even made me feel about, like, what would I... Like, I hope... I hope I'm a certain way in the future when I'm older. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so, morality score-wise, I, I think I think I'm quite happy to give it a 10. Okay. Because th- there's nothing that's, like... There's literally nothing dodgy in it. There's no, like... There's no obviously no swearing because there's no speaking at all. There's no nudity. There's no there's not nothing. There's no aggression in this at all. There's no combat. There's no fighting. Um, it's more. I guess it's going to just differ on people on how they feel the outcome was and how the situation was dealt with in the story. But I thought I thought it was good. 
Nice. So there you go. So it, it, a on the. Kind of me a bit. I, I think I think it's de it's definitely worth a shot. Yeah. Definitely worth a shot. Um, you could literally even like just come over one day and play through the whole thing. You could literally do that. <laughs> I, I'm saying that because there's no way I'd give you my switch to take off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I definitely definitely uh, recommend it. if you find it cheap enough. I think it's one of those games. I think everybody could play it and reasonably enjoy it. So there you go. That is Old Man's Journey for Nintendo Switch. So just to sum up, it is a 8 out of 10 on the game score and a 10 out of 10 on the morality score. So moving on, we're going to go on to our final section, which is section 5, which is Topic of the Week. Topic of the Week. Welcome back. It is time for our final section, which is our Topic of the Week. And this week is all going to be about IGN's um, employees just being fired called Philip. I'm not even going to attempt to say his second name because I don't even fully believe that everybody, um, that everybody, what, what, what are you confused about? His name? Philip, yeah. Philip, what's his last name? I can't, I don't even know. It's up there. No, I've not put it in. Ah. I've not put it in. Um, so I don't know how, I'm... The spelling of his last name, I have no idea how yet. Yeah, actually, I don't. I don't want to say it <laughs> if I'm not going to do it justice. <laughs> I don't even feel like other people are saying it right, so <laughs> I just left it as Philip. The only difference is it is Philip spelt with an F, oh. not a PH. Why is it Philip spelt? I could make plagiarism okay. jokes here, but I'm not going to. <laughs> um, Maybe that's what you're avoiding. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, we're kind of going to take. I'm sure most of you probably know this whole controversy already, but I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a lightning quick um, example, like like how this whole story has progressed. But we're specifically going to be talking about how we move on from this situation. I've seen a lot of people doing videos about how disgraceful he is and the bad things he's done and all this other stuff. I kind of want to talk about where we go from here now. Where, how do you move on from this situation? And so we are going to give you our thoughts on the situation as well, but we're just going to talk about where we're going, where we think people should go from there. So this whole thing started, uh, so you can obviously look up IGN Philip and it'll come up straight away. Uh, so there's a YouTube channel called Boomstick Gaming, and they noticed that um, they, they put out the Dead Cells review, which we just talked about. Um, they put up their Dead Cells review two weeks prior to this whole thing happening, right? So this game had been out on PC for a while, so he was playing the PC version of this game. So he was able to get this game up, this review up two weeks early um, because he wasn't under an embargo, which is basically like the developer says all the reviews for this game go out on this date. You know, know what I mean? So it's make yeah. sure that everybody's everybody puts it out at the same time. But he wasn't under this embargo because he was doing a PC version of it that had been out for a while. So mm -hmm. some people are being confused about how this has happened. How did he get his review up so early? Well, that's how. So he's not he's not done anything illegal here. Yeah. It's not even illegal anyway. It just means that the developer probably won't give you games or endorse you if you don't stick to their embargoes. Yeah. Um, I said this was going to be lightning quick and I'm explaining embargoes here. Uh, so <laughs> Boomstick Gaming had his review out for two weeks already. So then IGN's Philip, who is the Nintendo editor and he's been there for about eight months, um, he put out his review of it. Boomstick Gaming realised quite a few similarities um, and eventually he decided that it was enough to say he's blatantly copied my review. So he put up a video um, and he basically put the put the video reviews up side by side and basically went through and was like, what do I do? This is blatantly my review <laughs> that, he's, <laughs> that he's ripped off. The video went viral. If you check it now, it's got over a million views. And this channel only has around 10 to 11,000 subscribers. So it's not a big channel. I'm, we're not a big channel. We <laughs> haven't even got uh, even a minuscule amount of that. But he, in terms of YouTubers, there's not like 10,000 subscribers, isn't it? Like huge. Um, so it, this, this eventually blew up. IGN got wind of it uh, and they put out a statement and after they took down the review and said, we're investigating the plagiarism allegations and we'll take this very seriously, blah, 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 blah. So the next day, they basically put out another statement saying, we fired our employee. They said it nicer than that. They said, we've, let, we've parted ways um, and they're going to be redoing the review and stuff. So there was a lot of discussion around this. A lot of people felt a lot of anger towards Philip and eventually... Philip a few week a few days later came out with um well he's not he didn't call that an apology video he actually called it responding to the dead cells whatever um 
So we've wa- you've watched yeah you've watched the apology thing. You can it's quite difficult to find it now because he Philip keeps taking them down basically he keeps copyright striking everyone who puts it up. <laughs> um, but I mean I saw it the day it came out because I was interested in it. But it's quite hard to find now. So y- you might be able to find it. You might not. But basically, the apology video wasn't really an apology video. He basically went through and he kind of said. I'm, he, really what he was saying was, I'm really sorry that this has looked bad on IGN. I'm really sorry that it's, you know, caused problems for them. But I take responsibility for it because I was the writer, but it wasn't intentional. So it was like, are you taking responsibility? Mm-hmm. Are you not? Uh, and <laughs> the video just didn't come across very genuine. And he didn't actually apologize to Boomstick Gaming at all. He, he just basically said, I know what it's like to be a small YouTuber. Keep doing what you're doing. That's not an apology, mate. No. I'm sorry. It's not an apology. That's like salt in the wound. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he kind of finished off with saying, I'm getting a lot of hate. I'm getting, My family are getting kind of like hunted down on social media and getting a lot of abuse thrown at him. Can you please stop? Um, and, then, and then he did the worst thing he could possibly do. And uh, he started basically firing shots at um, Kotaku. Uh, Kotaku and Jason Schreier. I hope I've got... I feel like I just got his... I'm pretty sure that's his name. I do know who he is. I've just gone... I've just had a, a brain fart. Um, but he basically took shots at him and he was... Because this whole thing... Um, at Kotaku, they basically did a, a, an article on it and they basically... Some people had tipped them off about other reviews that may have been plagiarised. And Philip really didn't like this. And he basically started taking shots at him and he was like, oh, they just want to kick me while I'm down. I don't think that's the case. I think no. they're just being journalists. Yeah. Um, which sometimes journalists are like that, but <laughs> it's their job to report the news, yeah. and this is news, unfortunately for him. It's not it's fake. News. It's not fake. <laughs> um, and then he's, and then he says, I think he's going to regret these words, but he was basically like, you know, yeah, look through my other stuff and let me know if you find anything. <laughs> so the in, the, I feel like the entirety of the internet then went on a, a crusade <laughs> to find as many plagiarism allegations <laughs> as possible. Um, so. The next day, he took his video down um, because he got so, so much hate. I think by the time I saw it, I think he had 10,000 dislikes and 1,000 likes. Um, and he tried, he did try to, on all of his comments, he tried to like, I, I don't know what you call it on YouTube, but you like love the comments and they kind of sent them to the top. But it, it wasn't enough because eventually mm. it just got flooded with negative comments. So the video went down. And then this manhunt basically went on to find as many of these plagiarism things. And to this day, I think there's around 20, um, they found about 20 different occasions of quite blatant plagiarism. And the other ones, I think, I think the Dead Cells review, you can't dispute. It's, it obviously is plagiarism. And the, I think a couple of the other ones is like, mm, maybe, maybe not. It, it probably is, but you can't definitely prove it. But then the one that was just damning for me he, he, Philip had done a video on HD Rumble in the Switch and he tries, he's basically like, I'm going to explain how it works. And he word for word just basically reads off a post that somebody uh, posted on a NeoGAF thread. And it's just word for word. You've seen it, haven't you? Yeah, it's just, it's bad. there is no dispute in it. It's like literally word for word. It doesn't change any words. It's just the well, same. He changes words in the other words. <laughs> exactly. But this one, <laughs> it was so bad. And I was like, mate, this is not good for you. Um, and apparently he's been, it, there's, people have noticed that he's been taking certain videos down and all sorts. So I think, I think the, the mm, I, we're kind of going to talk about the situation first and just how we feel about the situation. Um, and then we'll get into where we go from there. But how do you feel about this whole thing? Is there, is there, is there specific things that have annoyed you a lot? Either is there things that you think he could have done better? Is there, is everything okay? Has he done everything right? What what's your what's your feeling? I just think he was just dead disingenuous in that apology video, basically. Um, I don't. At the same time, I don't like apology videos on YouTube. I don't think they 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 do anything good for the person. I think they should just maybe use social media to to apologize. Say I'm really sorry for what I've done. Um, and just, yeah, not try and sit there and defend themselves for, mm. or whatever it is. Um, but at the same time, he, he shouldn't have done it in the first place. Like, to, to put yourself in that position in the first place and claiming someone else's work as your own, it's just mm-hmm. a bit of a silly thing to do, really. I, I mean, 
do you really lack the creativity to do that yourself? And that's the sad part, really, isn't it? I guess. Yeah, I think I think that's. I think when he did that video, it just he he was literally putting fuel on the fire. Like it made people want to catch him out even more. Yeah. Um, I just to me, I just think the best thing he could have done is just come out and gone. You know what? Yeah. I, I made a mistake here. I shouldn't I shouldn't have plagiarized that because that's the thing, he, he doesn't mention plagiarism. He doesn't no. he obviously is saying, look. I mean I think that things that annoyed a lot of professionals was that he was like, you know, my review process is the same as everyone else's. I I look at all research tools available to me. And he's basically saying, you know, it's how everybody looks at each other's reviews and all these professionals are going, No, we don't. <laughs> no, we don't, and I know they don't, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Um so I just think he just, he, he put fuel on the fire. And I think if he just come out and just said, look, I made a mistake. I shouldn't have done this. Um, he can give his reasons if you want. I think it's interesting that he says, I'm going to give you my side of the story. And then he doesn't give his side of the story at yeah. all. He doesn't say anything. Um, but if he just said, sorry, and moved on and gone, you know what? Yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be difficult, but I want to continue doing YouTube stuff. And this is a learning point for me. I'm not going to do it again. I'm going to take a bit of time off, but I'm going to come back. And I'm going to come back stronger. And I think... It would have been old news now. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think even people who want to hate on him still, I think nobody would care now. It'd be done. And you'd just be left with the people who still like you and were your subscribers before. But it's just this story is just continuing and continuing because people want to find more now because you've challenged yeah. them to. Why would you do that knowing that you have <laughs> done that? I don't even know if some of it is just that he doesn't understand what plagiarism is because he says yeah. later on, he says, you know, it's the Kotaku guy is like, I don't know if he just thinks because views are similar that that means it's plagiarism. And it's like, I don't think you get... It doesn't have to be word for word the same for it to be plagiarism. Mm -hmm. If you've stolen people's ideas, thoughts, yes. sentence structures, all this, it's plagiarism. Yeah. So I don't think he get. I don't know if he just doesn't get that, but I think, to me, he's ended his career now. I don't yeah. see how he can come back from this now. So I was just thinking, though, can he actually say sorry for doing that without, like affecting him badly you know what i mean like as in like can he, he can he admit to that in a video without facing legal consequences for plagiarism and well stuff like i think i think some people said at the start they, they they actually said oh they wonder if ign has actually told him it, it, it it's not a good idea to admit it yeah. because it's going to have legal implications yeah. but i think i think I don't think IGN has done that at all because a lot of the IGN employees have come out and yeah. been, been ridiculing him for it. But I think, I don't know if that's what he's thinking, but I just think that isn't going to stop it. If, if anything, no. if I, I just think like, if I was just your average person, someone stole my stuff and I was going to be like, you know what? If he admits to it, fine. Yeah. And then he doesn't. That makes me want to sue him. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I know so I actually feel like, I don't know if he's thinking that, Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I think... It, it's not the right thing to do. No. It's not the right it's, thing, but I think, not, but I think I don't I think it's going to help him out. He might be thinking, I think. Yeah. I think he might be thinking. But that. I think as well, like, I don't think you, you would have had this mob of people trying to find more stuff as well. I think there would be some people who would still be investigating, want to know, but you wouldn't have masses of people trying to find more because you've challenged them to do that. You yeah. know what I mean? If he just said sorry, or, I mean, would it have even been a smart thing for him to actually, to actually just make his YouTube channel private for a bit? Probably would have been a good idea. You know yeah. what I mean? I don't know. Scrap your videos, start again. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know, but I just think that was that was his biggest mistake. Just he, if he and just apologised, it'd be fine. Oh, and then of course, yes, how did I forget? <laughs> he monetized his video, which is just that's a big YouTube <laughs> no no. That is a big YouTube oh, no no. Gosh. So obviously that that to him is he. The, what what can you even say about that? He made the conscious decision to monetize <laughs> that's that. Video. Coffin, that it one is, it's like. At the end of the day, like, if for any of you not sure why, I mean, most people who are you who are into, into YouTube will get why that's a bad thing. But if you, if you don't really understand why that's a bad thing, it's essentially he's 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 gonna make money off his apology to somebody for doing something wrong. Like that's not okay. <laughs> no. That is just not okay. Um. So in terms of like what's come out of this, I think obviously Philip is the big loser here. Um. I think IGN handled the situation very well. Um, I think they did it with integrity. I think they... I, I The only thing I kind of wish they did, I actually kind of wish that they... Because they did kind of hide away all this stuff in the review. I kind of wish that they put, like, a big statement out on, like, the front of their website. 
and been like big apologies to get boomstick gaming or even paid boomstick game which he really should have done because they all yeah. have got money off the ads on the video review that yeah. philip had put out they should have really gone all that money we made off that that's yours because it's his work mm. i think there's just small things like that i think would have been good but i think how they actually handled it i think firing him there was no other way that they could do that because again if you don't really understand why plagiarism is a massive thing in journalism like that is just the worst thing you can do as a journalist yeah. is steal somebody else's content yeah so that looks bad on IGN. So they, they had no choice. So he's kind of, he's obviously the big loser. The big winner is obviously Boomstick Gaming. So he's gone from 10, from t- between 10 and 11,000 subs to nearly 80,000. He's on like 78,000. <laughs> and that was like over like a week. Um, so obviously he's the big winner. And actually Dead Cells, ironically, so he actually apologized, which I find crazy. He apologizes to the Dead Cells um, development team for this, for being wrapped up in all this, doesn't apologise to Boomstick. But actually, people have obviously pointed out, all this has done is made Dead Cells, it's just given them free publicity. So loads of people <laughs> who hadn't even heard of Dead Cells will now know what it is because of all this. <laughs> and it, it, it like shot up to number one immediately on the Switch. And honestly, I'm not saying that's the reason it did it. People are excited for the game, but it just made it top of the news stories. You know what I mean? It's Dead yeah. Cells everywhere. So those two have actually come out big winners in this. So I think we kind of unanimously agree that this was not <laughs> he blatantly plagiarized yeah. he should have he should have just apologized and moved on yeah um I, boomstick gaming handled it all very well he was very much like i i, I don't want him to be fired you know i just want i just want the recognition or whatever which is totally tough. you know what i mean he's been really good about it basically yeah so we kind of unanimously agree on that, but it's my the, the kind of topic which I know we've been talking about this for ages. I said it was going to be quick and it wasn't. <laughs> the, the kind of topic for this week is really on this situation, where do we go from here? So right now there are still loads of people scouring the internet trying to find more examples of plagiarism. Where does Philip go from here? Where do we go from here? How do we move on from this? What do you think, Mike? What do you think us as a community should do about this now? Well, he's done something wrong. He's kind of admitted to it a little bit. Oh, has, has he? I don't no, know. well, no. He, <laughs> yeah, he's not really admitted to it. By the end of the day, if someone is doing something wrong and they're not willing to admit to it or whatever it is, what can you do? Apart from encourage them to admit to it, yeah, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Um, um, but I don't think abusing people or calling them out on other bits of plagiarism they might have committed is going to help um, get them to admit it and move on, really. I mean, like, I think as a community, you should you should just forgive what he's mm-hmm. done and we should just move on from it, really. I, like, mm. At the end of the day, I, I, I'm just thinking, there's a, I think there's a verse in the Bible that talks about not going to bed angry. Mm. Um, I think if you're going to bed angry thinking about what what he's done um, and how he's gone about what's happened after that um, then you're just as bad as he is yeah I said you, you, you're just being drawn into into what he's doing really you, you you're just getting angry for nothing and at the end of the day what what is the point of sitting and stewing and being angry and upset about something when you mm. can be happy yeah um, so yeah, just forgive him. Move on. Mm. I think you we talked about this earlier, um, and you pointed out that like like he he when he's when he said that like his family and stuff will are getting all sorts of abuse and stuff. I think he is using that as a bit of a get out and be like you know yeah. don't hate me too much because this is happening. So don't worry about that other stuff. But you point out that that probably will be happening. Oh, yeah, um, he's probably getting docs. The internet sorts. can be a very volatile place, can't it? Send them pizzas he's not paid for. Or... <laughs> yeah, and yeah. all sorts. Um, I'm sure I'm sure his family have had all sorts of horrible things said at him. I can't even imagine. No, I couldn't. But imagine. I just don't think that that's helpful for anybody. And no. I think... I think in these situations, people love to jump on the bandwagon as well. There'll be people who aren't even really bothered about this, but they just love to get on the hate train. Yeah. And um, I just think, look, the person who should be the most angry is the guy from Boomstick Gaming at the end of the day. He's had his stuff robbed. Yeah. He's had, you know, somebody has made money off his work that he's not been paid for at the end of the day. And I think how he's handled it at the end of the day, he's gone, look, I don't wish the guy any ill health. Uh, you know, he's done something wrong, whatever. You know, he's benefited from it at the end of the day. 
it's time to move on. And I think if he's in that position, why do we need to be? Yeah. So, like, he's not hurt me personally. You yeah. know what I mean? Yes, he's done something stupid, but we've all done something yeah, stupid in our lives. Stuff. And I'm sure on this YouTube channel, we will do something stupid still. I, I'm just I'm just a crazy guy. who will just do crazy things. <laughs> I will probably make a mistake at some point. <laughs> you know what I mean? We all do that. But I think... I think in this so it's in this situation it's harder because he's not admitted yeah. to his fault. And I think that's why people are so riled up about it. But I think, you know, like you you say, you know, as a as as a Christian, you know, it says turn the other cheek and all that, and people don't like that phrase. But it's yeah. that the point of it is really to go, you know what, right? Even if you're not gonna if you're not gonna admit it and you're not gonna apologize, whatever, I'm not gonna allow that to affect my life now yeah. by letting that eat me up. So I'm just gonna go, you know what, you've done you did something wrong. And you don't want to admit it. Okay, I'm just going to move on. And you know how you move on? You just don't watch his YouTube. If he comes back to YouTube, yeah. you don't watch his YouTube videos. You don't engage with him. You don't, you know, you, you don't need to watch his stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's, at the end of the day, he's ended his own career. He's done that himself. His punishment, he's done to himself. You know what I mean? His yeah. career is over now. He might be able to come back to YouTube for a bit, but I mean, it's, it's not going to be to it's the like extent that. that it possibly yeah. could have been. Um... And I just, I just think, you know, really, here's a crazy thought. We should actually just want the best for people anyway. And yeah. I hope, I hope one day, I really do hope that one day he can admit it to, to himself and to other people and he can, and he can move on and grow from that. I think for him, like I said before, he may not have even really understood that plagiarism was that bad. And yeah. he might have just, he didn't, you know what I mean? He, he, even in that one that we talked about, the Neo Gaff post that he just read out he actually said just before he says i've been doing my own research all he has to do though that's different is said here's here's a post for uh, that somebody put up on neogaf and um, that's actually the best way i've heard this explained and then just put the person's name you know what i mean he just yeah. needs to learn to be able to do that and yeah. just basically credit people <laughs> and i think we don't need to like destroy him over that no it like his life's not in a good place right now and i don't think we need to make it worse no. and i think and i think if you were in the same situation, I think you would want the same. And yes, you probably sat there thinking, yeah, but I would admit to it. Yeah, but people would still hate you for it. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? So I think it's that. It's to, for us, I think especially as Christians, yeah, I think it's about forgiving and just moving on with yeah. your life and not allowing it to consume you anymore. And I think all those people scouring for more plagiarism things, like it, it was kind of funny at first because he challenged them to do that. But I feel like that's kind of over now. And I'm like, we get it. He plagiarized. And he's probably most of his YouTube channel is plagiarized. We get that. We don't need to continue to find stuff because it's not helping anybody now. No. Is it? So there you go. It's one of them, isn't it? I think we just, we're not condoning what he's done at all. If anything, we're no. very much, very strongly against it. And yeah. we will never, obviously us on this YouTube channel, we will never do that. No. <laughs> we have no intention of plagiarizing <laughs> anything. And that just is, it's just career suicide. But at the same time, I don't want his life to be... He still has a family at the end of the day. He still has to make money to feed them. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't want... I don't want anything particularly bad that's to happen. Not yeah. particularly. Not at all. No. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of it. We're kind of interested anyway. Uh, let us know in the comments what you think about this whole situation. Uh, where do you think the community needs to go from there? Where do you think he needs to go from here? I think it's obvious what we think. I think he needs to just... Like we said, he just needs to admit and move on himself yes. i think he needs to take time out for yeah. sure <laughs> he needs to not oh, come yeah. back to youtube for a while uh, but yeah, after this. <laughs> yeah let us know what you think anyway is there anything you agree with us is there anything that you think that we're absolute morons for saying let us know anyway um it's been a pleasure and as always as? we will see you next week on the next late, late night gaming show thanks for joining us and we'll see you very very soon bye